If you're planning to spend the weekend saving New York in a division beater, then you might want a little help fighting off the bad guys, staying alive and getting all the best gear. We've been playing it ahead of the weekend and collected 11 essential tips to help guide you through your first few hours as a newly activated agent. Weapon of choice. Before you leave your base of operations, make sure you set your character up with your preferred loadout. You can carry a primary, secondary and side weapon, and it's useful to pack a short range weapon with decent damage along with a scoped weapon for range. Check the stats as some weapons feature talent bonuses which activate at certain levels. If you have any mods, equip them by highlighting a weapon and hitting X or square. These can boost weapon stats and apply bonuses. However, some mods will only fit certain weapons and others have level requirements. Abilities and skills. Your character has three main stats, damage per second, health and skill power, which are affected by abilities. Firearms improve your weapons damage, stamina increases health, and electronics boost skill power, which in turn improves all abilities and skills. These levels are directly influenced by gear, so check attributes and equip parts that increase the abilities you want to focus on. You start off with one skill slot, which you should assign to Pulse to scan the area around you and highlight enemy threats. Later, you'll unlock a second skill slot. We recommend the Sticky Bomb to either fire directly at enemies for immediate damage or to set traps. Squad Goals There are two main ways to team up with other players in a division. While you're in a hub, you can approach other players and then click on the right stick for the option to join them, or you can select the matchmaking option when heading into a mission area. It's best to try and establish a squad made up of different specialists, such as a tough attacker, a medic, a sniper, and so on, so you complement each other in the heat of a battle. Communication is key when working together, so coordinate your actions with headsets if possible, but if you don't have one or just don't like talking to strangers, then use emotes to indicate your intent. Keep your head down. Cover is vital, as enemies can take a lot of hits, and if you run around in the open, you'll quickly get cut down. When you discover enemies, find good cover before engaging to get the upper hand. The cover move action is useful for getting close without being detected, so look at the next piece of cover and then hold A or X to reach it. Remember that only a partially filled health bar regenerates, so if one is getting low, remain behind cover until it refills. Use your pulse skill to regularly scan the area and highlight threats to track them through cover. This also reveals grenade indicators over enemies with throwable projectiles, so prioritize taking them out first. Red wedges on your minimap can also help track where attacks are coming from, so pay particular attention if you see these to the side or behind you. Firing enough at an enemy behind cover suppresses them, giving you a few seconds to approach or change position without them returning fire. Stay on target. Those numbers pinging off enemies when you shoot them represent the damage you're inflicting, and although the higher the number the better, obviously, the colour of the points is also important. White is a standard hit, blue means you're hitting armour, orange represents a critical hit and red is a headshot. Critical hits and headshots do the most damage, so always aim for orange and red hits. Tougher enemies with armour will also have white bars above their health bar, so you'll need to deplete that before you can deal proper damage. Loot. The Division is an RPG, so make sure you grab any dropped loot marked by beams of light. Elite enemies have yellow markers and can drop better items, and named enemies are rare elites with even better loot. Regularly check your inventory to review items you've picked up and equip them if they are better than your current gear. Items are coloured to indicate their ascending rank, so Worn is grey, Standard is green, Specialised is blue, Superior is purple, and High End is yellow. Shop. There are three vendor options in the division. Your base of operation deals with weapons, gears and mods and uses cash for some items and comes with a restock timer to limit your access to others. Safe houses use cash as well to sell higher level gear based on the level of the area they're located in. You can also score rare items here. Lastly, there are dark zone checkpoints which use dark zone credits and limit gear by rank, while dark zone safe houses let you buy stuff that doesn't have to be extracted and can still be used if you fall below the level requirement. Go dark. The world of the division is divided into two areas, the open world and the dark zone. Both have separate ranking levels which increase by taking out enemies and completing other objectives. The dark zone is both PvP with teams and PvE. It's all about getting loot, which you can do by attacking your own team if you really want their stuff, but you'll turn rogue and a bounty will be put on your head. If you die in the dark zone, you'll lose dark zone credits and XP, which means your rank can decrease. Your status as neutral or rogue can affect your losses, with neutral losing less than rogue. The act of going rogue will also lose some Dark Zone credits and rank, so you don't want to rush into it. It's also a good idea to stay away from the northern areas of the Dark Zone to start with, as that's a higher level area and you will get owned. Crate Expectations The Dark Zone contains three different types of crate. A standard chest, ones that require a certain Dark Zone rank to unlock, and ones that need special access keys. These access keys are obtained by killing other players, rogue agents, and occasionally from random drops. Keep an eye out for named elite enemies, as there's a chance of both better drops or finding a chest. 
Extraction. Your Dark Zone gear has to be extracted and decontaminated before you can use it and will appear back at your stash in your base of operations. When you're ready to extract, fire up a flare and get ready to attach the bag to the helicopter when it arrives. Whatever you do, however, don't wait around for the chopper near the extraction zone. Firing up a flare will call in players from all over the Dark Zone hungry for easy kills and loot. If you hang around, you'll be a sitting duck for every opportunistic rogue around. Hopefully those tips will help you get by in the beta. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more, and if you have any tips or help of your own, let us know in the comments below.